Terry Dozier, Hello, teacher Terry. of the year. Nice to meet you, President. Yes, nice to meet you. And congratulations. Honor. Thank you so much. I would like you to meet my husband. Oh, my husband, Mark Dozier. Nice to see you very much. Well, I know we're supposed to get out. Mr. Secretary, Mr. Dozier, we're going to have you go ahead and be President. Uh, Chris will be right behind us. Thank you, Mark. Here are the books for you, President of Christ. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you so much. This is such a thrill. Secretary, you're going to be escorting your place out of the city. I knew you had a busy day and you're listening to the raids. It's This is just the beginning of a very long well, one for you today. Yes, but this is this is a kind of a nice interlude. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much. A little different than most of the other things that are going to happen today. 30 seconds. What? 30 more seconds until they get in place. I'm done already. Oh, thank you. He's my the Secretary of the Treasury and is now the Chief of Staff here. And he keeps me working at the desk over there. Oh, I, you're I the keep, slave driver. I'm, I'm the whip. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, I just wanted to brief you real quick. Okay. You and the President are going to be announced out. You go out into the Rose Garden and step up on the uh, small days we have. The President's going to go to the podium and, and make remarks. You're going to go out and stand to, stand to his left while he's speaking. Okay. And at the end of the president's remarks, you're going to have a mar another mark where you step over to the left in front of a little table, and the president will move from behind the podium to his left also. And in the center will be a table with the presentation, the apple model okay. on a mahogany plaque. The president will present it to you, and you're both going to stand and face the cameras in front of you and kind of walk to your left both ways. And after uh, your presentation, you can go ahead and put the apple back down on the table, and then you'll go to the podium and make your remarks. Okay. And when you finish, uh, that'll be the end of the ceremony. All right. There. So. I hope I'm going to remember all this. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to hold that for you? Yes, or? would you okay. please? Sure. Thank you. We're ready. Oh, well, here we go. We're going to have to. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Teresa Dozier, the 1985 National Teacher of the Year. We count on them being the hero that Emily Dickinson once described. If I can stop one heart from breaking in vain. Each gifted instructor, each leader helping restore excellence in education today. An adventure of creativity, powered by the deepest treasures of the youth and love. We have such an individual with us today in Saigon. Mrs. Therese Connect Dozier enjoys a dual honor. She and her mother, her, her brother, teaching is a way of repaying that debt. And she has. Her teaching is a reflection of her own experiences, a statement that there is no certainty our values will serve. I strongly believe, and I know that Secretary Bennett agrees, that you do so well, not only teaching, but I already know. You are Teacher of the Year because you've taught so many, so much, and so well, and even more because your gift has given them joy and love of learning. And I don't think I'm going to present Mrs. Dozier with a golden apple. President Reagan, thank you for those wonderful words. I cannot tell you what a tremendous honor to be here today, being recognized by the highest office in our country, and what a privilege it is to be living in a country where public to encourage our teachers, to restore a new faith in our public schools, and to inspire our brightest students to go into the teaching profession. And for you students that are here today, 
I want to commit to challenging feel imaginable. And I wish for you all of the joy and the happiness that I can. Test, test. Um, 18, February, uh, 18 April 1985, we're in the Oval Office closed meeting. The president meets with Democratic senators. itself is at stake in Nicaragua. After four years of dictatorship, the FSLN, the totalitarian ruling party, has not succeeded in breaking the resistance of the Nicaraguan people. So they came here and visited the White House this morning and gave me this one. You'll be getting uh, one up there for, for all of you. Framed? And uh, I don't know whether they'll frame it. <laughs> Mine was framed. And I just thought you'd like to see this because they talked me into it. I, I believe now that we ought to go for it. <laughs> <laughs> you had to twist your arm yeah, yeah, yeah. They, uh, Max Riesdorf had you on the doubtful list just before. <laughs> <laughs> leading. Leading, leading. <laughs> well, listen, let me seriously, though, and talk here for just a minute, and then let me hear from all of you. Uh, I, first of all, one <coughs> thing that I regret that in some circles, present company accepted, uh, I regret very much the, this is kind of being placed over into a Democrat-Republican context. I think this is one of those situations where traditionally we've always closed ranks at the water's edge, and it does have to do with our national security. And the, the reason for proposing this plan that it came was inspired by the, the fact that several weeks ago with the Contras, offered to lay down their weapons and enter into discussions, negotiations, uh, regarding a peaceful reconciliation to simply restore the goals of the original revolution. And today, contrary to what all this disinformation program says, the bulk of those Contras and their leaders are also veterans of that revolution who uh, fought against Somoza and who fought for <coughs> 18 April 1985, we're again in the Oval Office is closed. Uh, President meets with uh, Dan McGurdy, uh, Congressman Dan McGurdy. Um, camera four, quarter C. I'm sorry, I kept you waiting. No, that's fine, the only thing, I can, only thing I can say is to lay the blame off and say every day that I have meetings with congressmen, I wind up being behind schedule. <laughs> <laughs> well, come in. I told Max that they, uh, they had to share. Oh, 
I just have this to be showing to some of your colleagues who've been down here today. All of these people here today. And this is really for you, I mean, the Congress. They're sending this to you, but they gave me a copy frame. Winston Churchill III is in there, there's Malcolm Fraser, who used to be the Prime Minister. And it's an urgent message from Europeans to Congress support the Nicaragua resistance. That's part of the line up there. So I just thought I'd keep it around here. Good. Well, listen, I know that you've just come back from a trip down there, and I'd be very happy to Shut that thing up. Very happy to hear your views. Well, we did have an excellent trip. Uh, Max was with us and uh, members of the Intelligence Committee. And, uh, it was a, a very, very good trip. I, I have taken the, the liberty. I have some photographs. I, I show you that runway and stuff that we, uh, that we walked. We walked the, the big runway there in Nicaragua, the Punta Fuerte. And uh, Bob Stump and I were able to do that. Some of the things that uh, we've been concerned about, and uh, perhaps I can just give you an indication of where things are in the House. Uh, I've been meeting some of our leadership and trying to express my concerns based on what I saw there. And that, uh, I think uh, photo op in the Oval Office. This is a congressional signing ceremony. Today is the 19th of April. Green camera had the recording. Resolution 236 uh, recognizes this historic occasion and the brave men of 2506. I'm very pleased. And I want to thank Senators Hawkins and Childs and Congressman Clay Shaw, and particularly Congressman Claude Pepper, for all of your efforts in making this possible. And I'll now stop talking and start writing. April 1985, Oval Office meeting with Eli Wuzel, Fitzpatrick on camera, Roger on sound. Oh, yes, I 
how are you? Well, do we have a... Do we have about five minutes? Well, why don't we take sure. some chairs over here? Where would you like to sit? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you can put me on that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Have a start. Right. Right. Take care. Yeah. So, why don't you... Uh, how are you, sir? Oh, yeah. Nice to Thank see you. you. Yeah, I'm just so delighted. Glad. How are you? So nice well, pleasure. Pleasure to always get to see you. Well, nice to see you. George. Hello, Marshall. Do you know Peggy Tishman? Oh, nice. 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 May I present the vice How are you? How are you? Oh, nice to meet you, man. Glad. For a long time. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, uh, get, get the government. Mr. President. Yes. Do you know the other friends? What? Do you know the other friends? Yes. We have I, been what friends. I've been hoping for you are, you know several days is that you know I am yours. But you know that we have been your friends for many, many years. We still are very, very devoted to you. And we came a few days ago to tell Don Regan exactly the same thing. We are on the same side. We are with you. We are trying simply to, to help you, to help you save your image. And ours and country, I know the difficulties. You have to make decisions since capital and politics. You don't have to make those decisions. I know that. But we are here to help you with that, to, to give you some background and then some understanding of why certain words hurt us. Not you, certain words hurt us and certain decisions. It's nothing that will change our friendship for you or our admiration for you. We are, we are together. Well, I think that we're all the victims right now of a lack of understanding. And let me make clear what has taken place. I'll have to say that I've always believed that forgiveness is divine, but I don't think I'm ever going to be able to forgive the press for their hand in this, what they've done. This entire situation came about as a result of Helmut Kohl's really sincere desire to make the observance of this end of the war day instead of one of shooting fireworks and so forth, make it that it followed the end of that war of peace and of friendship. And it's most unusual in the world to stop and think seven heads of state will be meeting in on in the economic summit, all as allies and close friends. And three of those seven were the nations of the Axis of the Nazi powers in Japan. And the Soviet Union, which was our ally in the war, is now the enemy and is really the only nation in the world that is really systematically conducting uh, persecution of people of the Jewish faith. And Helmut had an experience. He and Francois Mitterrand appeared at a military cemetery together a year ago in uh, at Verdun. And the impact, the impact on his people was such that he, months ago, spoke to me about this trip when we were there, if we could do the same thing. And I agreed. Now, we do know that most of the, this does not mean forgiving or forgetting, because I've said the opposite of that, of, what took place and what you who were in those camps suffered. They're, they're never, we can never wipe that out, nor should we. And I will repeat, as long as I have breath to speak, we must never forget, and it must never happen again. But the people of Germany, the vast majority of which were either small children or not born yet, are really having a problem with their own shame of what their country I don't know that we can ever imagine anything of that same kind of having, uh, at the same time wanting to love your country and be loyal to your country, but at the same time having a great, this great feeling of shame and guilt. So the misunderstanding that came when the invitation to Dachau seemingly came from outside the state visit that had been set up. And I felt that for me, as a guest of the state, in the midst of a series of events that had been arranged, for me to go off on my own and do this was the wrong thing to do. And I, I said, I also thought that the individual who missed the invitation uh, sort of had a political axe of his own to grind in Germany. He's a member of the government. 
Well, evidently, it had not been made plain to me that uh, this was part of Helmut Kohl's thinking also to do this. Now, the, uh, when Helmut cabled me to the news broke, my answer in that press conference, when I immediately said yes, we have selected now, uh, as the result of Mike's being there, Nelson Bergen, we think it's far more important place. Seems that Dachau is uh, kind of a, well, it's a rebuilt, just a building, <coughs> it's all rebuilt to show what was, but Nelson Bergen is. But it was my suggestion. That's right, it was. Well, I suggested it. Well, Alex suggested well, that's what it's going to be. Now, we, the services that had been arranged at Bitburg, where our troops and German troops are there together as a part of the, the NATO line. And I have learned also there, there that Americans have been stationed there so long. There have been many marriages. There have been children born. There is an interchange between these groups. And when the, serum, when the cemetery there was picked, Helmut himself did not know of the presence of about 30 graves of SS troops. There are 3,000 of them, so all told, there. The bulk of them are from the Battle of the Bulge, which means they were these youngsters and teenagers that were conscripted toward the end of the war when the manpower shortage was so great. And uh, I did not mean when I said they were victims too, that their experience in any way was parallel to yours. I simply meant that I think everyone who died in that war on all sides were victims of the Nazi terror, the horror that that man loosed on the world. And I have found out also that our own military, as well as some of our allied military, over the years have had ceremonies on various occasions where they, our military, laid wreaths at that cemetery and commemorating the, the dead on both sides of all wars and the, the devotion now to peace. Everything that I'm doing in this thing is based on not wiping out what happened in the past, but recognizing this great change that has taken place now, and not only among the survivors of that war and those of us who remember, but the younger generations on both sides that have come up, and for the sake of the living and the preservation of peace and the continuation of this, of this peace. But believe me, I will never reduce or downplay the Holocaust, what it means. And as I say, I believe that all people, including the people of Germany who did not live at that time, must, as I'm sure they do, pledge in their hearts. Now this morning, uh, Cole called me about the Bergen Belsen and did not know that I was aware and approved also and, and uh, wanted that on the schedule and I said of course he was quite dismayed by what has what has arisen and uh, reiterated and with some emotion only his feeling about what good can be done for the living today, recognizing how we have become friends and, uh, and allies. We understand the need for reconciliation, and we understand the need for allies, but we here today are celebrating 5,000 years of Jewish heritage, and it is very difficult for us, the thought of a tribute being paid to those individuals who tried to destroy that heritage forever. And that is the sentiment of the Jewish community. It is very troublesome for them. Yes, I, I can, as I say, I can understand. But again, does this really apply to 
men who were drafted into a military who fought a war. Of course not. Because they had no choice. Of course not. And as I say, <laughs> there two were victims. The thing that we must recognize as being, as what threatened that extermination was a thing which we ourselves have eliminated uh, by way of that war. So as I say, I think our own dead were victims of, of Nazism, but the laying of the wreath there, we were the victor. We Thank killed, God. We you killed, imagine yes, we had the that's right, and we killed those men. And I, I think it should be pointed out also that several heads of state of Germany since the war, of Italy and of Japan, have all come here and gone to Arlington and laid wreaths and, and things of that kind. And maybe it took more for them since they were the okay. defeated, but it was an indication that they too feel the same way about those that perpetrated that era as we do. And they did it to make it evident that uh, this, we are all, we're different now. Well, for you to give us this time is such a treasure for me. But I do have a problem with the SS, with that super Nazi force whose brutality yes. is unparalleled in the history of mankind. And we can't liken any other soldiers no. to them. And I think it is that that is so problematic. For I'm, I wish I you would find another well, site. No, but I have said to our people, I said, look, 30 out of 3,000. I said, let's find and get ourselves as far away in that cemetery from them as is possible. I'm quite sure there will be members of the press who will do anything they can to seek those out and take pictures of those tombstones. But uh, even, uh, even Cole, when that was decided, was not aware. And as a matter of fact, he made a personal visit. And as you know, the tombstones there are flush with the ground. They are coming out. And it had snowed. <laughs> and he, in good faith, <laughs> said, no, there are, there are no SS in the cemetery. Well, I think it's safe to say that the President's remarks during his entire trip in Germany will draw a distinction between uh, the German soldier and the SS, and that he will in no way condemn uh, I mean, uh, approve or say any kind of approving word regarding SS Nazis uh, or the Third Reich. In no way will condemn it and will constantly say that uh, we do not want a repetition of all that again and we will be working uh, during this Reagan administration to ensure that it doesn't this way. That we have made such a reversal. But in August, going to face the end of the war with Japan. And uh, we can't forget that in the fighting of that war, the Japanese policy with their soldiers had been one of brutalizing them. You know, the death march, the rape of Nanking, the things that they did. Um, and we have to recognize that today, that is not, <coughs> that is not the Japan of today. I don't know whether you know this, but this conscious effort to make brutes out of a people that, as we've seen their culture now, generally calls for great courtesy.